Alright, so now it's time for us to take a look at lighting up this level. Up to now, we've only been working with this kind of temporary work lighting system. It's just a couple of lights that we placed in the level, which are nicer than working in unlit mode, but they're not here for keeps. Now, before we really jump in and start playing with lights, I want to take just a moment and talk to you about light mass. Light mass is a lighting calculation system that is integrated into Unreal Engine 3 as of UDK, and it allows for highly realistic light maps to be created for your level. Which begs the question, what is a light map? Any light source in your level that is not going to move. So if we take a look, we've got, say, these guys here on the ceiling. We've got these fluorescent tubes up here. We've even got these light bulbs that are mounted all over the walls. These could be considered to be static lights. They're never going to go anywhere. And any lights that we placed in the level to be associated with those, to actually cast the light, those would be static too. They never need to actually move. When creating static lighting inside of Unreal Engine 3, that lighting is going to be pre-calculated, literally baked out into a texture. Now, the benefit to doing this means you don't have to calculate a lot of hardcore lighting simulations in real time, so it speeds things up. But with a system like LightMass, you can also calculate realistic results. LightMass allows you to calculate things like bounce lighting and color transfer. Now, these may be things you probably take for granted in the real world, but let's say you're in a room with only a single light bulb hanging over your head. If you were to look, let's say maybe you hold your hand out, so the top of your hand is being illuminated by the light bulb, but the underside isn't. Your under, the underside of your hand is completely in shadow. You'd still be able to see the underside of your hand, though. It wouldn't be completely black. That's because light doesn't just travel straight out to a surface and then stop. It bounces around, it scatters, it hits things, it reflects, it transfers itself all over the place. That's what light mass allows you to simulate in your levels. Now, to really drive the point home, I've set up a couple of really quick levels that I wanted to show you. Let me start off with a simple level that does not use light mass. So I'm not going to save changes here. This is a level using the standard kind of lighting that predates light mass. If you've ever used the, uh, the editor for, say, Unreal Engine 3 as of what, Unreal Tournament 3, then you might have seen this kind of lighting before. All we have is just a single light source, and the sphere of influence is actually not even making it all the way to the far side of the room. So the entire corner of the room is completely black. You get some really nasty looking shadows on this static mesh. If we wanted this lighting to look real, we'd have to place a lot of auxiliary lights to kind of simulate the bouncing of additional light. Now, what I'm going to do is open up the same level rendered out using light mass. And here's our result. The shadows across the static mesh look a lot better. The shadows on the floor are starting to get a little bit of a fill light effect. We don't even have a blackened area back here in the corner, even though we're using the exact same light. That light's co or sphere of influence, excuse me, still doesn't reach the far corner of the room, but other lights, uh, other lights from that light, other rays of light, are striking the surfaces of the level and being bounced around, and they are hitting that corner. Now, I want to show you something else, too. If we switch over to lighting-only mode, and we take a really close look down here at the floor, now this may be a little subtle, especially on your monitor, but notice that the shadow underneath our ball is not just a plain flat gray. It's actually got a little bit of red that is transferring from the ball down to the floor, just like it would in real life. If you take a really brightly colored object and place it next to a white surface, you can see colored light from that object bounce off and hit the white surface. Now, the good news is that light mass is very, very easy to use. It doesn't require a lot of work on the far end, but you can really tweak it a lot. What we're going to do for the purposes of this video is keep things very, very simple. Because really, in terms of lighting, using light mass, we could spend quite a while just talking about different lighting setups, talking about different things you can do with lights. But we're going to keep this very straightforward. Let me jump back over to our level. The first thing we need to do is set up our level so that it's easily compatible with light mass. Technically, we could go ahead and build our lighting right now and light mass would fire up. We'd actually see the swarm agent open up and let us know that light mass was calculating things. But there are things we can do to help light mass along. In short, we can focus light mass's attention to 
only take a look at our level. We do this with a light mass importance volume, which needs to be placed around all of the import, uh, well, important areas of your level where a player could actually go. So technically, this should be surrounding your entire level. Let's create one of these. What I'm going to do is jump out of this great big viewport, and let's take a look up here at the top viewport. Now, I've got some static meshes that are hanging out the side here. Don't worry about those. Those will be perfectly all right. Uh, what we're going to do is grab the cube builder brush. And let's see, we're set to some interesting numbers here. Let's go ahead and just set these back to the default 256s all the way down. And click build and close. Now, also, let me uh, not select that static mesh. That would be good. And let's grab the red builder brush. Where's the red builder brush hiding these days? Do I have it hidden? If we go under edit, I mean, jump, actually jump over to view. Let's see here. Draw the builder brush. Okay, it's there. And then if we come over to show, the builder brush is here somewhere. We just got to find it. There it is. I knew it was around here someplace. So let's just fly over here and select it. Hello. All right. Now, I'm going to take this guy. And let's come up here to the top view. In fact, I want to make the top view nice and big. Now, currently, I have the toggle brush polygons button active. And that's why the red builder brush appears to be shaded. If you don't like that, you can just deactivate that button. And then that will go away. Now, in this case, it also went away with the red builder brush. Notice I just toggled game mode on and toggled it back off, and the red builder brush returned. So if that ever happens to you, then that's uh, one way to fix it. Now, if we look really closely, let me actually jump from wireframe mode to brush wireframe. I'm just going to set the red builder brush up so it just fits right along the outside edge of the level. Now, let's switch to geometry mode. And I'm going to make a marquee selection of the bottom set of vertices. We'll drag these all the way down to the opposite side like so. And then another marquee selection that we can just drag to the right and line up with the far end of the level. Generally, you want to keep your light mass importance volume as tight around your level as possible. You know, make sure that you're taking light mass's attention and focusing it as tightly on your level as you can. Now, let's jump out of this viewport and into either the front or side viewport. It doesn't really matter which. And I'm going to deselect the red builder brush. And let me jump in and out of game mode real quick to make sure that that is rendering. And we'll slide this up. Now I'm going to hold down Control and Alt and drag a marquee selection box around the top set of vertices. And we'll just slide these all the way up to encompass all of our level, like so. Okay, so now with that, we can get out of geometry mode. We just need to, re to actually create our light mass importance volume. So let's right click and choose light mass importance volume, and that's it. If we move our red builder brush, we now have this great big yellow volume that completely surrounds our level. Now, if you don't create one of these, when you build your level, it's not like the world will end. It's, it's not like that uh, your level will never actually get its lighting calculated. It'll just take a lot longer, and you will get a warning telling you you should have made one. So now you know how to make one. So let's come over here, and now I'm going to build our lighting with just these two work lights in place. So uh, when I do this, when I actually click the build button, the video is going to jump just a little bit, and that's because I'm pausing the video during the build process. There's no reason for you guys to have to sit through that. So the build button can be found up here inside the main toolbar. I'm just going to go ahead and click on build all. You could potentially click on build lighting. Just as a habit, I click on build all. It's fewer clicks. So I'm going to click this, and now I'm going to pause the video, and when we come back, the build will be complete. So you might notice a small jump. All right, we are back, and our lighting has been built. So let's take just a moment and have a look around. So objects now have these really cool shadows, but those shadows aren't perfectly pitch black. You can see that even back here, where we have no direct lighting, we're getting just a little bit of light that's bouncing around and keeping things nice and illuminated. And back here, we're getting very much the same thing. Overall, for having two lights in the scene, it looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to do one more build. We're going to take our work lights and actually delete one of them. So I only have one light left, and if I wiggle that light, it'll break my lighting result. Now, currently, this light, you'll notice its sphere of influence ends right about here, so light's not even making it to the far end of the room. I'm going to fix that. Let's demaximize this viewport. And I'm going to jump up here to the top view. Now, with this light selected, I'll press the F4 key to open up its properties. And we'll expand light. 
light component and expand point light component. And I'm going to set the radius to about 1600 units. Now, with that done, I can actually slide the light to the left just a little bit in the top view. And now you'll notice that the radius fills up the entire level. So now let's close out the properties. And I'm going to do one more build. So once again, you're going to notice the view jump for just a moment because I'm not actually going to keep recording all the way through the build, even though it really only takes a couple of minutes. So we will be right back. I'm just going to go ahead and click the build button. And the build is now complete. So let's take a look at the results. Now, this room is going to look very similar to how it did just a moment ago with the pretty much the same shadows. But if we come back here to the back room where we technically have no lighting, take a look at the work that light mass has done for us. The light that has spilled in from the door has actually diffused its way up into the corners of the room and technically you could see anything you needed to see if you actually had a player running around back here. It's fairly dim but it still gets the job done. So that's just a quick look at what light mass can do for you. Now moving forward we're gonna take a look at setting up a fairly simple but still very nice looking lighting system for this level. We're gonna make use of some actual light objects, more than just work lights. We're going to place some actual lights, some real lights in our level that we're, we mean to keep. We're also going to take a look at how static meshes that are using an emissive material can be used to illuminate levels all on their own without actually having to add any light actors. And all of that is coming up as we move forward lighting our level. So for now, go ahead and save your work so far, and then we'll move forward. Yeah. <laughs>